Scene 5, Graveyard. Older Eben and Smith walk through the cemetery looking at imaginary tombstones while Smith consults with a map. I don't mean to be critical, but next time I pick the place we stay at. But it was only $75 a night! Yes, but after sleeping in those beds, I believe a silk would scrub down may be in order. Here it is, Eben. You, you okay? Older Eben stands there staring at the tombstone, emotionless. Uh, Eben, what's going on? What are you feeling? Older Eben now looks around. I don't want to say it. I mean, we came all this way and... And what? I'm here for you. What? What's going on? Nothing. What did you expect to find here today? I don't know. Clarity, closure, a, a sense of what Kyle and I were or weren't. It's okay, Evan. He's not here. The remains of his body might be here, but he is not here. You want to stay a little longer? Want me to leave you alone here with your thoughts? Maybe. I'll be over there if you need me. Smith walks to the other side of the stage. Older Eben remains staring at the tombstone. Still nothing. Younger Eben and grandmother enter. Do like old cemeteries. The statues, the family mausoleums. Like something out of Dracula. <laughs> Look, when I die... I don't want you to think I'm in a place like this. People live on after death, in the memories and stories of loved ones. They do not live in a graveyard. Smith. Smith walks over to him while Eben and grandmother exit. I'm ready to go now, I guess. Older Eben and Smith exit. Younger Eben is back on his computer typing. Funny today. I was out in the yard helping my mother with her gardening. I hate gardening. See, I like gardening. Mother enters. Oh, are you telling Kyle about that absolutely creepy thing you said in the garden today? Yes. The little, the little white garden markers we put on in the garden to indicate that what we were planting reminded me of tombstones. It's like a little mini graveyard out there. You are one sick and twisted soul. Sick and twisted, sick and twisted. Yeah, I've always thought that the garden markers looked like tombstones, too. Really? No, not really. Uh, but I can see it. Of course, gardens kind of are a place of death and rebirth when you th think about it. That's why I love to garden. Reminds me of the Greek myth of Persephone, the goddess of spring. In the winter, she goes down, to the, down under the earth to the realm of the dead to be with her husband. The flowers and crops wither and die. And then in the spring, Persephone returns to the land of the living. The flowers and crops spring back to life at the same soil that they died. Kyle, dinner. I gotta run. Talk to you later, hon. Yep. I gotta water the garden anyway. Older Eben enters. A few weeks after going to the cemetery with Smith, I went down to New York City to see a show. I still don't know what I expected it when I went to the cemetery, but that's besides the point. I was walking through Grand Central Station to catch my train home. Grand Central is perhaps one of my favorite places in the world. I looked up at the ceiling and saw all the constellations painted on it. And there in the corner was Pegasus. Kyle enters and stands next to older Eben. And at that moment, it was as if Kyle were standing next to me. Mother enters. Fine. The person you met one weekend. Have a pilgrimage. And sulk when you don't feel his presence. You ever feel my presence? Every day. 
when I'm driving and I listen to a song we used to like, or whenever I watch the news and I start yelling at the TV, especially with the vile psychotic snakes we have in Washington, D.C. right now. Right, right. I see where I rank as a priority. That's fine. Wait, Mom, I'm sorry. I mean, I really do... You are still so, so easy. So easy. Burden. Burden. Mother moves closer to older Eben and stands by him. Kyle takes older Eben's hand. By now, Alice and Janet are sitting by Kyle's computer. Alice is reading from a book of the complete works of Shakespeare. When he shall die. Take him and cut him out in little stars, and he will make the face of heaven so fine that all the world will be in love with night and pay no worship to the garish sun. That's beautiful. I went to visit his grave today to tell him that Tim and I are having a baby. Well, that's right. Kyle introduced the two of you, didn't he? Yeah. Have you picked out a name yet? Kyle, if it's a boy. And what if it's a girl? I don't know. Maybe Peg? Peg? Yeah, Peg. Like Pegasus. Peg's usually short for Margaret. Yeah, but Peg doesn't need to know that. (laughs) I'm kidding there. Kyle's mother recommended Eleonora. Eleonora? It was the name she picked for Kyle if he was a girl. You know, before he was born. When did you start talking to his mother? She called a couple months. She called a couple times last month. She needed someone to talk to. I would have slammed the phone down on her. The way she treated Kyle, she didn't speak to him for over a decade. How can a mother do that to her own child just because he was gay? I know, I know. Look, I get it. She has been far from my favorite person through the years, and it's easy to judge her, I know. But she lost her son, and her husband's sick. I can't begin to imagine how she feels right now. True, true. As I stood there looking up at the constellations on the ceiling, I could feel Kyle holding my hand as he did all those years ago as we drove around. And I showed him where I'd grown up. The way his thumb would gently glide down the palm of my hand. And the twinkle in his eye whenever he grinned. I guess I felt what I'd really hoped to feel that day in the cemetery in Canton. But such things can't be planned, can they? Blackout, end of play. <laughs>